Welcome to part four of my Dangerous Creatures presentation. Today we begin with... Hyena, which lives in Africa, the Middle East, India, and Southeast Asia. <laughs> During the day, hyenas are usually seen skulking around a kill waiting their turn to eat. But after dark, hyenas turn into skillful hunters. So if you hear a few hyenas laughing in the dark, don't try to join the party. Hyenas look very much like dogs, but they're not at all related. Hyenas were long thought to eat only the kills of other animals. But experts now know that hyenas are skillful and also deadly pack hunters. In fact, lions often steal the kill of hyenas. Sometimes a hyena hunts and sometimes it scavenges. The same is true of many vultures. Vulture, which lives in warm climates worldwide. If you find yourself constantly surrounded by vultures, you might like to consider taking up an exercise program. You're obviously moving so slowly that they think you're dead. Gliding on a rising column of warm air, soaring far above the earth. Oh, for the life of a vulture. From a high perch or from a high glide, vultures keep a sharp eye out for food. Once a meal has been spotted, it's a race to see who can get there first, and who can eat the fastest. The sight of vultures soaring through the skies gives some people the creeps. The same people would probably cover their necks if they spotted a vampire bat. Vampire Bat, which lives in Central and South America. Vampire bats can carry disease, so never let one suck on your neck. But unless you're camping out among a herd of cattle in Central America, you have no need to worry. The bat's clawed feet are good for crawling, and for hanging upside down while sleeping. When night falls, bats come out of their hiding places to hunt for food. Vampire bats look for large, warm-blooded animals. Just a tiny bite from this tiny bat, and dinner's ready. Vampire bats are gentle creatures, despite a reputation for being savage. The same goes for Tasmanian Devils. Tasmanian Devil, which lives only in Tasmania. The Tasmanian Devil's vicious temper exists only in cartoons. They're really very shy creatures that snarl and growl only when threatened. But if someone backed me into a corner, I suppose I'd get fairly touchy as well. Tasmania and Australia were once connected. That's why they have so many animals in common. When early Australian settlers heard nightly growls and screams, they thought the woods were filled with devils. That's how these scrappy little animals got their name. <laughs> The Tasmanian Devil has a reputation for being pretty mean. So does an African Warthog. Warthog, which lives only in Africa. <laughs> when hiking across Africa, look out for Warthog burrows in the ground. And steer clear of them. A Warthog may be at home, and you're not invited in. The warthog has tusks, 
But this Asian wild pig, the Babarusa, has teeth that grow right through its snout. Warthogs use their impressive tusks to dig up roots or to excavate burrows. It takes a lot of rooting around to satisfy a large family like this one. Warthogs are known for their aggressive dispositions and for bumps on their faces. The same is true of a rhinoceros. Rhinoceros, which lives in Africa, India, and Southeast Asia. A rhino has poor eyesight. Stay downwind and move slowly and quietly around rhinos. If you don't know which direction is downwind, you better stay at home. Rolling in the mud or dust may keep the mites off, or it may just feel good. Whichever, rhinos love to do it. With their thick hides and sharp horns, rhinos may look tough, but they're no match for bullets. These majestic creatures have been nearly wiped out by people who shoot them just for their horns. A rhinoceros looks big and heavy, but it can run surprisingly fast. The same applies to another heavyweight, the hippopotamus. Hippopotamus, which lives only in Africa. <laughs> Hippos spend most of their day sleeping or resting in water. Look for ears and nostrils at the surface before paddling into an area. If you see any, keep your distance. Hippos will charge, and they aren't slow coaches. Look at that mouth! Those teeth! Although they're not meat-eaters, hippos are among the most dangerous animals in Africa, if provoked. These peaceful-looking hippos are covered with scars. And here's the reason. Those long, sharp teeth. Fighting, splashing and biting are common events in a hippo herd. A hippopotamus is just one of a wide variety of animals you could see at an African waterhole. African Waterhole. Africa is one of the most marvellous places on Earth for wildlife. You can see animals for every letter of the alphabet here, from aardvarks to zebras. When everyone eats in the same place, it's just as well that they don't eat the same thing. African grasslands dotted with acacia trees, are home to an amazing variety of wildlife. <laughs> Both predators and prey come to the waterhole. You might see a python lying in wait on the shore. Python which lives in Africa, India, Southeast Asia, and Australia. A big python could hold you down by just lying on top of you. They can weigh up to several hundred pounds, so don't invite a python to a pyjama party. The longest snake? Probably a reticulated python. And the heaviest? Probably the anaconda. Pythons don't need to eat very often. A rat or possum can keep one fed for several days. And a really big meal will keep a python satisfied for weeks.
Imagine a snake that weighs hundreds of pounds. It's a good thing that all snakes don't grow as big as pythons. Snakes. How can you tell a venomous snake from a harmless one? Some people say it's the shape of the head or the type of eyes. But I wouldn't advise you to get face to face with a strange snake. You might scare the poor thing to death. Snakes have different methods for killing, but they all eat the same way. They swallow their prey whole. Many people have nightmares about being bitten by snakes. But snakes aren't really interested in people. They'd rather sink their teeth into something they can eat. Snakes can be dangerously venomous, like a rattlesnake, or harmless, like a mangrove snake. Mangrove snake which lives in Southeast Asia. Do you plan to prowl through mangrove swamps in Indonesia? No? Well then you're safe from the mangrove snake. Does it look like a branch? Or could it be a vine? It's best to be sure before you grab it. When this frog gets grabbed by a vine snake, the frog puffs up to seem bigger. But a frog should never underestimate what a snake can swallow. If you were bitten by a mangrove snake, it would hurt, but your life would not be in danger. Unfortunately, the same cannot be said of a bite from the deadly black mamba. Black mamba, which lives only in Africa. If a black mamba challenges you, freeze and remain perfectly still until it's long gone. But then, unless you're hiking through the bush in Africa, you're not likely to run into this snake. A venomous snake like the black mamba has few enemies, but the secretary bird is one of them. A boomslang has keen eyes. After sighting its prey, this snake will give chase on the ground or in the trees until it catches its meal. A black mamba moves very fast for a snake, but it doesn't even come close to the speed of the fastest animal on land, the cheetah. Cheetah, which lives in Africa and the Middle East. Unless you look like an antelope, you're not in danger from a cheetah. And this is a good thing, because you couldn't beat a cheetah in a foot race in any event. The cheetah has dog-like claws and paws, and can't retract its claws like most cats can. In fact, cheetah means dog-cat. The charging attack of a cheetah causes panic in a wildebeest herd. In the turmoil, the cat picks out a victim, usually the weakest or the slowest. After a few seconds, the chase is over. This time, the hunt is successful. Cheetahs are the fastest animals on land. They have plenty of room to run because they live in a huge grassland called the African savanna. Grassland environments. When I say grassland, I'm talking about wild grasslands where the grass grows tall. Sorry, your lawn doesn't count. When the food supply gets low, many animals move to greener pastures. A 
Rhea is a grassland bird that's tall enough to look you in the eye. Perhaps surprisingly, it's the male Rhea that digs a nest, hatches the eggs and cares for the chicks. Natural grasslands exist in only a few locations in the world. The same is true of natural forests. Forest environments. Do you know how many plants and animals live in trees, especially in a tropical rainforest? I started taking an inventory once, but I gave up after I ran out of paper in my notebook. In cooler climates, surviving can be a complicated business. But conifer trees have the art. Forests are not just trees. They provide food and shelter for all kinds of animals. In Africa, endangered mountain gorillas play in the small forest reserves they call home. Forests are home to many different types of animals. On the ground, you might find centipedes. Centipede, which lives in North, Central and South America, Europe, Asia and Africa. And this is one area where the program might need to be updated, because I know they also live in Australia. If you want to find a centipede, turn over every stone you see. They like to hide in dark, cool places. Of course, you might find a few other interesting things as well. The bite of most centipedes is no worse than a bee sting. They eat household and garden pests. How can you tell a millipede from a centipede? On each segment of its body, a millipede has two pairs of legs, while a centipede has just one pair per segment. A centipede does its hunting at night, and so do most wild cats. Cats. If humans had the powers of cats, we would see well in the dark and be able to leap from the pavement to the roofs of buildings. But we couldn't ride bicycles or dial telephones. Cats are stealthy hunters. They sneak up quietly and then they pounce. Wild cats of all sizes and colors once roamed all over the world. But many now face the threat of extinction. If we lost any of these beautiful animals, Earth would be a much poorer place. That's the end of this chain. Cats leads to a screen that we haven't covered yet. There are only a couple of really short chains left now, so I might as well throw them both into part 5. The first one begins with the deadly funnel-web spider. 